Sunday of the Blessed Month of Baba. And again, this month we're focusing on the power of God. And today we see his power over Satan. And I think it's appropriate to talk about this today because it seems like our society is obsessed with like the darker things of this, of this world uh, this time of the year. Demons and evil and the dark side, however you name the forces of Satan, they seem very evident in our society, not just in the Halloween time, but just in general. And so there's a couple of questions that we're going to talk about today. Do we actually believe in demons? Do we believe in these evil forces that are against us? When the priest prays in the sacraments of baptism, he begins the service with an exorcism. He prays over the, the catechumens, those who will be received into the church. And as he prays, he does a couple things. One, he prays over the water and he blesses the water and he asks the Lord to remove any evil or demonic spirits in the midst of the water, to bless the water, to make it water that is full of regeneration and life. In other words, we begin our Christian life by acknowledging the reality of the devil and his demons. And then we declare all-out war against them, and we renounce them, and we even spit on them. In fact, some of the tradition, uh, when we remove a, a piece of the clothing or the, the old clothing, that we, there, there should be a set of change of clothes uh, for the one who's being baptized. And so as we remove the old garments, we literally throw them to the, to the west. Uh, we throw them on the ground to reject, we reject Satan and all his powers. And so... All throughout the prayers and the services of the church, there is this explicit understanding of a spiritual battle taking place. And the Lord and his angels are in a cosmic war against Satan and, his fallen, and the fallen demonic angels. So Satan is already defeated, but his desire to take as many souls with him as possible is still evident. And the battlefield for this epic cosmic battle, uh, is in the human heart. The church, by the grace of God, equips her sons and her daughters with spiritual armor. And, and the church gives strength to their children uh, th for this epic battle. The, the ability of, one's, of oneself to stand and do battle with the demons is based on the amount of training that we have put into the life of the church. This is why the services are so important. This is why it's, it's, it's important not just to be, um, you know, I come to church whenever it's convenient. The hymns, the reading of the scripture, the lives of the saints, our personal prayer rules at home through the guidance of our Father of Confession, all these things, fasting, right? All these things work together as training for our spiritual battle and as a reward for putting on uh, the life of the church, we're rewarded. We're rewarded with spiritual gifts. We're rewarded with armor. We're rewarded with uh, grace in order to continue to fight the good fight. So in today's gospel, we hear about a man who was possessed by a demon. And this is not just like the scary stuff of Hollywood or movies or things like that. No, it's, it's, it's a reality. It's a reality according to the life of a Christian. Demons are powerful, and their goal is to occupy our hearts and to turn our hearts away from being occupied by God. And they work by trying to influence us. And so we are also reminded that the most fierce and powerful demon cannot even stand in the presence of God. They are filled with fear. They are immediately, they recognize their maker and they tremble before him. They are powerless against the Lord of glory. And so since they're powerless, we might wonder, then why is it that a Christian can still be influenced by or even be possessed by a demon? And the short answer is that we may live a life that helps energize the demons that are around us. How does this happen? Well, for some, it can be an outright rebellion against God. It's, it's, I'm against the teachings of the church. I'm against the teachings of the saints. And therefore, I turn my back on things. 
And so it could happen like this. But for most, I think it's a subtle, gradual, like growing lukewarmness uh, to the things of God. In our lives, the most dangerous threats is our growing number of distractions. These are the silent enemies when they're not properly moderated and there's not a balance in our lives. We, we, have to, we just have so many possible distractions in our lives. Distraction, for our purposes, is the opposite of watchfulness. So that so many of the church fathers have, have spoken with great zeal over watchfulness. And so to be distracted by prayer, uh, from prayer, to be distracted from the thought of God, to be distracted by, uh, from the thought of virtue or goodness or beauty. This distraction means that our souls are not being fed. That our souls are not being nourished. They're not being fortified. They're not being armored for a battle, even when that battle is raging against us. Every day that we are lazy or slack in the battle, the enemy recovers and attempts to cover more and more ground of our hearts and our minds. Unfortunately, it can happen so gradually that we're almost like lulled into a sleep. It's like the, the story of the Trojan horse. It comes and it's a sneak attack sometimes. We're distracted by and busy with many things that cannot give us life. One thing is needful. And this is something that Abuna was talking about last week. One thing is needful. We need a heart and a mind that are dedicated to loving our Lord Jesus Christ and living a life prescribed by his body, the church. That's the only thing that we need. We don't need anything else. This is the way to turn the spiritual battle into, into our favor. We simply open the door for the Lord and he enters. And wherever light is present, darkness is extinguished. So if we want to be with the Lord in a place of light and holiness, we are called to open the doors and the windows of our senses and allow our Lord a chance to enter and to allow his goodness to fill us. Listen to the words by a well-known author, C.S. Lewis. And by the way, we are reading C.S. Lewis, uh, Mere Christianity, in the youth meeting. And so uh, C.S. Lewis is a, is a very famous author. He was a convert from atheism, and he's a brilliant man. But he wrote this in one of his other works. He wrote, There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive, unhealthy interest in them. They are themselves equally pleased by both errors and hail a materialist or a magician in the same delight. In other words, According to C.S. Lewis, if you don't believe in demons, or if you do believe in them and have an unhealthy attraction towards them, either way, the demons win. Why do they win? Because the goal of the demons is to keep people from focusing on Christ and from loving God. This is much easier than ever during our day and age when you have your eyes glued on every device that you can possibly have at every moment of the day. All of the information that we take in through our senses, they have consequences and benefits. There's pros and cons. Here's an example. There's a benefit of like looking up the news, the, the weather report, right? Because it gives you that information. It could be a, a positive experience. You could bring the umbrella uh, or a sweater or sunscreen for that matter, right? Depending on what the information is on the weather report. But information can also have consequences. If you pay attention to what St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, he, we are reminded that bad company corrupts good morals. And this is true when we are badly behaved, immoral, beha uh, immoral people. And it's also true when we spend time taking in information from inappropriate material. All of this has an effect on us and can help separate people from the love of God and Christ, which is the goal of the demons in the first place. The battle is unlike any other battle. It's a brutal fight. It's a power, it's a, it's a power grab. It's a fight for resources. 
It's a fight for real estate. There's a fight for power. You will have, the question is, who will have authority over you? Who will guide you? There's a fight over resources. Who will, who will serve you with your gifts and talents? Who will you serve? There's a fight for real estate. Who will live and reign in your heart? And the battle is happening every single minute of every single day. And that's why St. Paul urges his people saying, pray without, pray without ceasing. This is why also St. Peter in his epistle, in the first epistle, he wrote, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Now, if you ever watch a nature program, you know that the lion may be big and bad, but he never goes after the strongest or the fastest antelope. He prowls looking for the young, looking for the weak, looking for the sick. And those words are not meant to scare us. They're meant to inform us of an unseen reality. Many of the church fathers spoke of possession, and many other elders and saints mention it as well. None of that has changed with the times of the day, because these are spiritual truths. These are spiritual realities, and they cannot be subject to scientific examination in a, in a test tube or a lab or anything like that. Labs and experiments are for material, physical observations, and the church is a place for spiritual observation. And so we see the physician of our souls, our Lord Jesus Christ, and his great love for those who are in desperation and in affliction. And the Lord is going straight to the place that everyone else has actively uh, been working to avoid. He is courageous and he is faithful beyond our understanding. And the Lord allows the demon possessed to be brought to him and he heals him without hesitation. This is the power that he has over the demons as we're reflecting on the power of God in this month of Baba. This is the power of the love that he has for mankind. With a word, he removes the offending demon and he brings back his sight. And with a healing hand, this man is able to speak again. In an instant, this is the power of God. Our God gives liberation and freedom from any kind of influences in all his, in all his children. Don't make yourself a slave when he has made you free. Christ, out of his love for us, has given us freedom as his children. It's our choice. It's our choice to exercise this freedom that we have in Christ, or we choose to be slaves to the world around us. And so practically speaking, the best way to exercise this freedom is to apply yourself daily to the goal of knowing him to knowing our Lord Jesus Christ, to imitating him. St. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, he tells us not to use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but rather to serve one another through love. This is how God wins the battle for power and resources and real estate, by giving us the freedom to serve one another, to care for one another, to feed and clothe one another, to encourage and support one another, and most of all, to love one another. Don't hold on to grudges. Don't hold on to misunderstandings. We need to love one another. Don't be a slave to that resentment. Our Orthodox Christian faith teaches very specifically that the devil and his demons and this force of evil constantly try to attack and overwhelm and eventually try to control our lives. In fact, the good news which our Lord Christ proclaims is that he is greater than any of the forces of evil. He is pushing back the kingdom of Satan in this world. Thank God that the influence of the force of evil is no longer anything that can take hold over those who follow Christ. Even Satan's greatest fruit, death itself, no longer has authority over, over anything in the Christian life. 
not even death itself. Christianity, when it's authentically practiced and lived, frees us from our demons. And we see this clearly in the command of our Lord to his disciples. Go and preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and cast out demons. Our Lord came to liberate us from whatever evil controls us, whether it be anger or rage or pride or greed or lust or gluttony or impurity or a hard heart, impatience, irritations, depression, whatever demons that we have and we struggle with, our Lord comes to set us free, to heal us in an instant. When our Lord Jesus Christ truly abides richly in our hearts, we discover a power greater than any demon, any habit, any obsession, anything that has possessed us. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the Almighty One, is ready to cast out whatever demons fight against us. Remember the encouraging words of St. Paul given to his disciple, St. Timothy, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. So to conclude, I'd like us to listen to a couple of words given to us from St. Theophan the Recluse, who writes, Refuse to listen to the devil when he whispers to you, Give me now and you will give tomorrow to God. No, no, spend all the hours of your life in a way pleasing to God. Keep in your mind the thought that after the present hour, you will not be given another and that you will have to render a strict account for every minute of this present hour. He continues by saying, in order that you may move your will more easily to this one, this one desire in everything to please God and to work for his glory alone, remind yourself often that he has granted you many favors in the past and has shown you his love. He has created you out of nothing in his own image and likeness. He has made all other creatures your servants. He has delivered you from your slavery to the devil, sending down not one of the angels, but his only begotten son to redeem you, not at the price of corruptible gold or silver, but by, the, by his priceless blood and his most painful and degrading death. Having done all this, he protects you every hour and every moment from your enemies. He fights your battles by his divine grace. In his immaculate mysteries, he prepares the body and the blood of his beloved son for your food and your protection. All this is a sign of God's great favor and love for you. And glory be to God forever. Amen.